Hey, what's cracking everybody? I recently did a video called Ideal OS MX Respin First Look. And uh, I got a few comments. Um, let's see right here. Darth Reven 2.0117. He said, so it's a German distro that is basically KDE plus MX Linux. And then ZMac also responded and said, what is the difference between this and MX Linux KDE edition? So to both of these answers, I just basically put, I don't know because I never use MX KDE. But on this one, I got a little more specific. I said, guess what my next first look will be? And that's what we're doing here. We're taking a look at uh, MX Linux, the KDE version. So, uh, Got the ISO up in the virtual machine. Let's head on over there and take a look at MX Linux KDE edition. So before we jump on the virtual machine, I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, I did upload version 3.0.4 of Linux of Prime. It is available now. So for uh, if you want to go ahead and download it, uh, it is available now. All right, now let's head over to the virtual machine. And we're on the virtual machine now, and you can see we have the MX Welcome. I'll go ahead and close this, and now open up the installer. Being that we already saw this installer in action, I might just uh, skip this for you guys and just uh, show you the uh, the first look. Okay, we are booted into MX Linux now. I went ahead and installed it, but I didn't want to bore you through the process since we already saw it on uh, emerald os ideal os emerald so um here we're welcomed by the mx welcome team um you have frequently asked questions user manual wiki tools tweak forums videos contribute popular apps and tour then you also have the about I'll go ahead and I'll close that. And from looking at it, pretty much it's identical to Ideal OS, or should I say Ideal OS is identical to this, uh, just with a few features, a few other uh, desktop icons, the, the application launcher uh, logo, and, you know, wallpaper. But, but you know, it, it is pretty much, I would say that Ideal OS is pretty much uh, MX Linux. <laughs> There, I don't see much difference at all. But uh, yeah, it's basically the same setup. We have the pan on the bottom. We got the system tray right here on the right. Pretty much all the exact same items. So you got your time and date, along with the calendar. You got a pull-up menu for hidden, uh, hidden functions. You got your internet. You got your mounted drives. You got your volume rocker. And you got your Yukwake, which is the terminal that opens up from the top. And everything's identical also on the right. You have Firefox as a web browser. You have a Discover file manager. You have system settings. And you also have two desktops. So pretty much identical. And also even the... Uh, the application launcher looks pretty much the same. So we do have recent applications, recent files, development, games, graphics, internet, multimedia, MX tools, office, science and math, settings, system, utilities, help power session you got a search bar and you also have some uh, applications right here some shortcuts so we have the conky toggle the LibreOffice, mx tools mx package installer uh, mx user manual console and quick system info
so right here they have a I, I don't know if I saw this on the last video maybe I did and didn't pay attention to it I don't know if uh, I'm not 100% correct but uh, you know so right here you have the MX package installer but it should have discover also and it does it does also have discover so they're there and pretty much all the applications everything is pretty much identical so I would say it's pretty much the same uh, I don't see much difference at all but I do want to take a look at this MX uh, package manager so upon opening it up you enter your password and then right here basically it's just all apps curated by section so you got like audio and then you have a pull down menu if you want to install one you just click on it and you got browser children desktop environments development docs email file managers ftp games graphics icons kernels language media center media converter messaging miscellaneous network newsreader office printing remote access screencast screensaver screenshot utilities server themes torrent utility video virtualization wallpapers and window managers and also from here you can uh enable repos so right now every time you click on something it automatically updates so that's pretty good then you got your mx test repo then you got your debian backwards you got your flat packs and console output seems to be grayed out it's not allowing me to go in there so i don't know what that's about but uh it is what it is so let's try installing the application from here so let's go to uh let's see let's go to file managers and i'm just going to install nemo so i'll click on the install button and it basically outputs the uh the terminal information right here into this window and the following packages were selected click show details for a list of changes i don't need to see the list of changes and it is installing the nemo file manager and the process has finished successfully so i'll go ahead and close this out and then I'll look for Nemo. I'll just do a search. And there you have it. The Nemo file manager. It's, the, it's, it's my personal uh, favorite file manager. It's the one I use for everything. So that's why I like it. All right. Well, basically uh basically i took a look at this yesterday already so there's really no uh reason to uh go over everything all over again you know why be the dead horse right but uh yeah uh basically ideal os is just uh it's just a uh a clone of mx linux basically the kde edition at least from what i'm seeing right here that seems to be the case unless unless someone knows uh, more than me can you please leave in the comments what are the actual differences because from what i can see right here there are no differences it is exactly the same thing i mean just different wallpaper you know little things like that but i wouldn't even call that a difference that's just an aesthetic look you know well hey i'm not i'm not mad at ideal os hey they're doing their thing their system works great so i don't have no complaints with them doing what they're doing it's all good as far as i'm concerned but uh yeah pretty much it's uh it's all the same but like i said i pretty much looked at this system yesterday so 
there's really no point in doing it all over again. I mean, like I said before, we do have the uh, same thing on the system tray, the same uh, pinned applications, the same, pretty much the same applications too. Digicam, GIMP, GwenView, yeah. It's pretty much the same exact tools. At, uh, at least uh, from what I see, it looks, it appears to be the same tools or the same applications. Unless there's something specific that I missed, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. So right here on the show hidden icons, we have a pop-up menu. And in here you have things like your clipboard, night color control, power management, Bluetooth, uh, display configuration, KDE connect, and lock key status. Uh, I just wanted to go over it real quick because usually I just I just skip right through it. I just point out that you know it's a pop-up menu, but uh I never actually go through what's actually inside of it because you know it's just uh it's mainly background services, and uh, you know this is just the easy way to get to them. All right, well that's gonna do it for this uh, first look of uh, MX Linux KDE Plasma Edition. Uh, like I said, I just looked at it yesterday, so <laughs> I don't want to go through everything all over again. There's really no reason to do that. So uh, I guess I'll just end this video now. Why even pull it any further? All right, you guys, if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, if you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. It's all gravy here on Linux. Uh, all right, you guys, that's going to do it for this video. And I'm out.